Good morning. So if we could get things going. Let's get the windows down. Let's get the windscreen cleaned. And let's turn left. Because it might be icy today. Uh, so I don't really want to take the windy route. Oh, let's get those windows up. I had a nice weekend. It was the week of Saturday, November the 5th. We had a nice little bonfire party. Somebody's given us a marquee. It's, uh, it was a windy night, unfortunately. Got a bit wrecked. Why are people want to sit outside in a cold, flapping marquee? I don't know but apparently they do. They seem to go down well. I personally, yeah, I personally wasn't. <laughs> I would have left early <laughs> if it hadn't been my do. But, you know, it went on from about, uh, well, they come and, about one o'clock to put the marquee up, some of them, and then uh, some left and came back and some stayed. And uh, then the majority came about five when it got dark and we lit the bomb car about six and then everyone had gone by half past eight. So I suppose it felt like a long day for me because I'd been getting the um, chairs out and uh, generally uh, organizing, uh, you know, the beer and that, moving tables and stuff. But I suppose for them it was just a couple of hours. They were well wrapped up. Now, hear that? Bloody clutch. I've oiled that clutch. I have oiled that clutch. I don't know whether it'll take a bit of time for the oil to get through to where it needs to get through to, but I'll tell you that Underneath of a footwell is not the easiest place to get to. And I've given it a, a right willy with the oiler. Hello. Check a trade. Check a driver. That is not the bit that's in the car is not squeaking. I think it must be the uh, something to do with the uh, The, uh, linkage to the clutch, you know, that's the other side of the firewall. Ah! There's a pilot speaking. You don't talk about firewalls, do you, in cars, but they've got them. In case there's a fire in the engine and you can't get out of the car, there is actually a separation. That's what all the footwell and everything is. It's, uh, it's a fire barrier. Anyway, how are you? I hope you're well. It's Monday morning. My daughter and her boyfriend are going to uh, on holiday for going away for a couple of days. So we're going to be babysitting the grandchildren. I'm looking forward to because we get on well with them you know they're quite funny they're quite uh, they're uh, seven and four seven and five whatever seven and four so you've got the brainy one and you've got the funny one and I'm not going to tell you which is which actually they're both brainy and funny so I get on well with kids because uh, I had three uh, younger brothers and sisters. So you could almost say I'm on my 10th, looking after my 10th children because I had three to look after when I was a boy. I had uh, two to look after when I was a parent. And I've got five 
grandchildren. So it's not my first radio, you know. Go on, you're gonna pull out in front of me, aren't you, with you? Yeah, now he's a local boy. You can tell that because if they pull out of a side road and then immediately turn into another side road, that means that they're they're not using the main roads, you know. They know their way through the back roads from A to B. They've probably got no tanks on the car. And they're probably running on red diesel. So, and bald tyres. But they, <laughs> the chances of them encountering anybody from the constabulary or a speed camera or anything are, are minimal. So they bring in satellite speed cameras. So, I had this woman, this woman that uh, said she was an absolute paranoid and phobic about having scaling and polishing done. And uh, as a result, we had to turn down two post crowns. She rang up and, or she sent an email through and said, um, is it right that uh, uh, you not you don't want me to do you're going to send me to a phobic dentist for the scale and polish but will you still do the crowns and I'm like well, that's immediately that's a bit weird because you can't be phobic about having a scale and polish and not phobic about uh, having a post crown done do you know what I mean so I gave her a ring back and I said look we sent you there because you rang up and said you're phobic she said, well, she said, I don't like all the scraping. I said, we don't do any scraping. She said, once they used this thing, sort of whizzy thing on my teeth, and, and it, that was fine. So I'm thinking, you're not phobic, you just don't like, you just had a scale and polish once that you didn't like. So funnily enough, we had a cancellation, so I said to her, lot, come in, and we'll see if we can scale and polish your teeth. If we can't, then, oh, you're gonna go off to a phobic dentist. If, but if we can, then we might uh, make a start on these post crowns because I do feel sorry for her because she's got her. She looks like she's been in a boxing match and lost her two front teeth. She's lost her upper right at three and two. So, you know, we do like to try and get these people fitted in fairly early if they've got front teeth missing. Like, for example, we did a crown on a lady, nice lady. lost her front tooth, was told that, you know, it couldn't be saved and everything, came to see us, we, we said we could probably do a, a, a root, root a post crown on it, but her gums were in a shocking state, so I refused to do it until she got her gums in some sort of reasonable condition, and uh, she uh, finally, with a lot of cajoling and two or three visits, she finally got her teeth in some sort of reasonable state. And then we did a post crown, and now we haven't seen her. And hopefully, they won't be in shocking state next time I see her. But, but she had to walk around with no front tooth, you know, for a long time. Well, not a long time, a few months. And um, we've got other people who are waiting for dentures and stuff like that. But these masks have been a godsend because uh, even people who've got no front teeth can walk around with, you know, in public with a mask. Uh, <laughs> in fact. I think that may well be on the old NHS uh, treatment plan soon. I think uh, they may bring in another band, which is just the issue of a mask <laughs> to cover to cover the fact that the patient can't get treatment. And this is getting really blatant now. I was telling you the other day about you know you, yeah, we had this patient in who. Uh, I'd had a lower denture made, but none of the none of the decay uh, dealt with, treated. So uh, I don't know what you're trying to do. Whiz around with a bloody gas fan. It's full of metal pipes, isn't it? It's basically basically a lump of copper <laughs> on wheels. But 
I suppose if you're a gas pool, you think it gives you like a, you know, you're the fifth emergency service, aren't you? Preventing gas explosions. So anyway, she's coming in at nine o'clock and I'll sort of see what I can do for her. So, so it might, might turn out to be that she's all right and it may turn out to be that she's as, she's as kooky as, um, you know, it give me a chance to test out my rules, won't it? Because she, she got excluded under my, you know, the 12, uh, the book of, uh, the book of uh, Nutty Patients. So it'll be interesting to see if she's... Oh, God. That's a diesel. I have to put diesel in the tractor. If it won't all fit in the tractor, I'd put the rest of it in the car and then sling the empty can in the back so that when I fill the car up, I can fill the... the... Uh, the can up. So it's white diesel, okay? Just in case, in case you're thinking, oh, he's filled the tractor up and he's stuck the rest in the car. He's got a bit of red diesel in his car. No, I don't. I pay, I pay full price for my diesel. Because I've only got a little tractor and it doesn't really use much. What a lovely day. Had another guy in. He's a big uh, uh, property owner, by which I mean he owns one property. In Ramsgate, and it's a big property, and it's a it's a nice uh, it's a good retail site. You know, sort of place that you could get a W H Smith or a. Not a Woolworth or a Selfridges, but definitely a, a Pizza Express or something in. Anyway, he was uh, he suffered a bit because um, his tenant wouldn't pay the bills. And uh, under the government moratorium, he couldn't chuck them out. Now, the, the it's a little known fact that if you could find another tenant who could pay the bills, you couldn't chuck out the tenant that wasn't paying the bills. And so you had to, have, you know, the government forced you to have no income. So really he's, um, he's been forced to have no income. You can never tell with these people if they're reasonably wealthy. They never tell you the whole story, you know what I mean? They could be, he could be, uh, you know, could all be a story. But, um, Anyway, I was trying to tell him. I heard this phrase, buy, borrow and die. Which means you buy an asset that appreciates in value. And if you are short of cash, you borrow against the asset. And then uh, you don't, uh, because it's a loan and not, um, you're not selling anything. So there's no capital gains tax to pay. On a, on a loan on an asset as opposed to uh, selling an asset so um, all you have to do is just pay the interest on the borrowing and then if you can get to the point where you do like um, an interest only loan which you just uh, you can afford to pay the interest in fact you can take out another loan to pay the interest if you like and uh, then by the time the uh, capital comes to be repaid, um, the assets shot up in price and so you can easily use it as security against a larger loan. But he sort of never heard of this and so, and he was never going to sell this asset so I think he's like many people. He's, going to be forced to like all these old ladies living in large houses in London that they bought for 20,000 quid and he's going to die in penury
ambulance going off somewhere. Yeah, and uh, just leave this massive great asset to his heirs who, um, because they won't be able to buy each other out, will be forced to sell it anyway. Anyway, I tried to get him invested in, uh, in Bitcoin, I tried to tell him about Bitcoin, and, but, and he's the last person, honestly, I spent probably five years of my life really earnestly trying to explain Bitcoin to everybody and why it was a good idea. And, uh, but now, uh, you know, you, you <laughs> the main uh, argument is that it's too late, they've missed it all, it was a big thing, it was a bubble and it's, it's near the top and there's no point buying something when it's about to pop and you know fair you know but sort of the Pete, standard peter schiff arguments so um so i sort of it's a bit like fax machines and computers and everything and email and websites and i was trying to explain to people all the time why they were a good idea and why they weren't a bubble and why they were able to get one and e-commerce and blah 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 and then i try what I do is, I, when I spot something new, I do tell everyone, you know, why it's a good idea and why they should do it. But, you know, for, for, I would say 99% of the time, when I talk about these things, I'm just met with a blank face. You know, blank, a blank face and nothing behind it, basically. <laughs> so, I sort of uh, proselytise about these things for a bit and, and then don't bother. But... I don't know, I don't, I, you know, it's not a case of saying, oh, you know, you ought to buy this type of car, or you ought to support this sort of football team. It's basically, I think, the monetary system is changing. I think there is, at the moment, what there is, is a transfer of wealth. And, uh, basically, if you don't, you know, the earlier you transfer your wealth, the better you're going to do out of it. Uh, if you leave it late, then you'll be buying at the same price as everyone else. But that's fair enough. I mean, you know, there, there are early adopters and there are late adopters. And he's 72. I don't know what he thinks he's playing at. I mean, he still thinks he's he's 32. And he's got a whole lifetime ahead of himself, you know, wheeling and dealing in property and stuff. But he's like, no, no, I've missed out on it. Which is what, <laughs> when it went over a dollar, everyone was saying, no, I've missed out on it. Um, when it went over $30, $30, everyone said, well, that's gone up 30x. I've missed out on it. Then it went up to uh, 1,000 from 30, and everyone's like, well, that's gone up another 30x. I've missed out on it. And then it went up from 1,000 to uh, 20,000, to another 20x. And everyone, no one would buy at 20,000 when they could remember it being on, on sale at 1,000. So they've, I lot, I've missed out on it, and at the moment it's about 65. So it's gone up another 3x, and everyone's like, "No, I've missed out on it." So <laughs> fine, fine, okay, all right. You know, I'm not. I've given up trying to convince people that uh, they're not early adopters. Uh, that perhaps they're not that intelligent. They don't understand it. They're not capable of understanding it. That, that a lot of people fall into that category. Or perhaps they're just not risk takers, you know? Perhaps they do what everyone else has done on the grounds that it's, um, you know, as everyone else has done it, then it can't be stupid. Or at least if it is stupid, then it's no more stupid than anyone else. And so they'll be in the same boat as everyone else, and whatever, you know, as a result of whatever it was they've done that's stupid. So they won't be the only one. <laughs> anyway, I'll uh, I've got to work. Lovely, eight thirty. Staff are all arriving. I'll talk to you later. Bye.